Hi, thanks for gardening with me. I'm Melissa and today we're in my craft room and we'll be talking all things seeds. Okay, so a little disclaimer before we get started. This isn't going to be all things seeds. I'm sure there could be videos upon videos of all things seeds. Um, I'm just going to give you kind of my little spiel on things that um, I do with my seeds, how I store them, where I buy them from, um, how I get my seeds, uh, different things like that. So I want to start off with telling you that um, you can get your seeds from so many different resources. You can get them from friends and family members. Um, you can collect seeds from your own plants in your yard. Um, some seeds will grow true to the mother plant. Other seeds will be completely different than the mother plant. So that's just something that you need to look into, like dahlias. Um, most dahlias are grown by tubers, but they also do set seed and you can save the seeds from your dahlias, but they're gonna end up being completely different, not completely different, but a little bit different than their mother plant. So as long as you're willing to make that little bit of a gamble, um, it's definitely worth getting seeds from your own yard because then it's free, right? Um, a couple of resources that I love for seeds, one of them, um, the main one is Johnny's and it's um, Johnny's Select Seeds. And one of the reasons I love this company and I'm not affiliated with them at all, I just love their product. Um, also, I love the information that they give. So for their seeds, they'll have pictures of what you can expect that the plant's gonna look like. They will have information on there as far as how to grow them best, uh, if they like sun or shade, um, how deep to plant them, how far apart to plant them, um, just all kinds of great information like that. They sell their seed packets um, from anywhere, I think 25 is the least I've seen to um, a thousand seeds, and I'm sure even more than that. So um, highly, highly recommend Johnny's Select Seeds. Also, um, you can order a catalog from them. You don't have to purchase from them to get a catalog and they will send it directly to your home. And just to have this and to have all the information right at your fingertips for anything that you wanna grow, um, it's just a wonderful wealth of knowledge. Love that. They also have a website, um, which I love all things digital. So you can go to their website and um, you can just click on the plant. It'll give you the information, um, just all kinds of great pictures and um, information is available right at your fingertips there. Also, um, this isn't seeds necessarily, but Swan Dahlias is a place that I love to get my dahlias from. Um, and again, you can get the catalog for free and their catalogs come with um, pictures and information um, for all their tubers that they sell and just lots of really great information there so highly recommend them too um, but going back to say Johnny's seeds so when you get your seeds and I have to say there's so many people that don't take full advantage of the seed packets that they get because when you get a seed packet you need to turn over and look at the back because the back of the seed packet of any place that you get seeds from is just gonna be a wealth of information for you. They, uh, the people that are growing, the professionals that are growing these seeds and selling them to you has told you exactly what you need to do on the back of this packet to be successful, <laughs> you know? So why not? Why not read that? Why not get that information off of there? So for instance, this is Digitalis, which is a foxglove. It says right on the package here that all parts of this plant are poisonous. So if you didn't know this and you're planting it in your yard and you've got a dog that likes to go around and eat your plants, well, that could be very dangerous. So you need to know what plants you can put in your yard and not to put in your yard if you have small kids or something like that. Um, it has the life cycle on here. Um, the use on here, excellent cut flower for borders, tells you how tall it's going to be, um, the color of it, also tells you the germination rate, um, which is so vitally important, the germination rate. So there's so many different ones. Some, some seeds will take three to four days to germinate. Some seeds will take 14 to 20 days to germinate. Lysianthus, I think, is one of the seeds that take one of the longest to germinate. But... If you're growing two different kinds of seeds and you don't know this, this one germinates and starts to shoot up uh, greenery in three to five days. And this one, two weeks later, still hasn't given you any greenery. You're going to think that 
either you've done something wrong or the seeds are no good and you're going to pitch it and you're going to move on to something else when in actuality um, it's just not time for it to germinate yet and what is germination so let's take a step back what that means is you have this seed you put it in contact with the soil some seeds like to just sit on top of the soil so they need light to germinate how are you going to know that it's going to tell you on the seed packet some seeds need to be buried a fourth inch or an eighth inch it's going to tell you on the seed packet and once that seed is planted and watered then after a certain amount of time the seed breaks open and um, roots will begin to form and you'll begin to get green growth that comes out so you need to read your packet to know when to expect that so that's huge and um, I love Johnny seeds for that reason too because they give so much information so that's there now another way to get seeds is from friends so i got these seeds from my friend leatrice um, it's a double cone flower i remember going over her house and just being like oh, that flower is so beautiful and then i saw some heat seeds heads and asked her if i could find if i could have some and of course she said yes so i just happened to have my <laughs> seed packets available um i carry these with me in my car, I got these a huge package of these from Amazon for next to nothing. It's nice because you can seal it and it's also um, opaque so the light doesn't get through. So that's pretty much what you need for seed storage. You don't want the light to really be hitting on them. Um, you don't want them to be able to get wet. You don't want them to be able to have a huge fluctuation of temperature. And then also there's so many seeds that are so teeny that if you don't have a way to seal it um you're just going to lose them all over the place this is another way that i've gotten seeds from a friend uh, this is cleome and i probably am saying it wrong but there are tiny little seeds in here and there's probably i don't know 50 seeds in there so 50 different plants in this one little container um, and this is in a ziploc baggie now it is not keeping the sunlight out so it's up to me to put it in a place where it doesn't get sun and I have not done that yet, <laughs> but what I will do is I will put that in my little envelope here. And then once I do that, I put my envelopes in these little containers. And I got this from Hobby Lobby and uh, I think it was like 15 or $19. And it's actually for storing photos, um, but they're wonderful for storing seeds. You can keep them sealed individually. Um, with the seed packets in there. So I have these listed. I have them separated by annuals, vegetables, herbs, and perennials. And then within each one of those categories, I have them alphabetically put in the containers. And that may seem like a lot. And if you don't have a bunch of seeds, that's probably overkill. I have quite a few seeds that I'm going to be starting this year, especially because I built my greenhouse last year, so I'm super excited to start seeds this year out in the greenhouse. But what I do is I go on Google Sheets and I created these. Um, again, you may <laughs> think it's a little obsessive, but my gosh, this is just going to save me so much time and headache later down the road trying to figure out what I did plant, when I need to plant things. Right now, where I don't have a whole lot going on, I have the time to sit down and create this. And I'll probably be growing mostly the same seed year after year after year. So it's not going to be like I have to reinvent the wheel every year. I just can add and take away from this as I see fit. But um, this is categorized. So I have the name of the plant under the time that I am to plant the seed. So I can just go say that I um, say it's this week, which is um, coming up on the second week of February. So I go to the second week of February, see what seeds I have listed there, and then I go and I pull them alphabetically, take them out and start my seeds. Also, I like to put next to it if it is a direct sown or if it is something that goes um, in the cell trays that will be grown inside. There are quite a number of seeds, especially vegetables, that you can direct sow outdoors. And I prefer to sow seeds directly outdoors when I can, um, just because then there's no transplant shock, there's no um, trying to get them hardened off, which is another thing that a lot of people miss out on and they skip this step. So 
say you're starting your seeds indoors and you're starting them under grow lights or you're starting them in a windowsill or whatever and they're growing up really great they look good you're ready to take them outside and get them planted well these little seeds that have gone from this um you know 68 to 71 degree house perfect temperature no wind no bugs and you take them outside and you plant them in full sun right um, they're not going to do well they're not going to be happy they need to be hardened off so what you need to do is you need to take the seeds um, take the plants outside for a few hours every day put them in a protected area even if it's a seed that wants uh, full sun a plant that wants full sun after you put it out you're going to want to put it in a protected area in um, partial sun for a few hours a day bring it back inside and then just do that it depends um, cold season annuals and cold season vegetables you don't have to do that as long as you would have to do maybe um, like the summer plants that you go to put out because you can fry those really quick. You know, you go start putting seeds out in or putting plants out in May and it's full sun and, you know, it's starting to get hot. You can really fry those plants really quickly. So, um, and it will tell you on the seed packets. And if it doesn't tell you on the seed packets, you can Google it very easily and find out how to harden off your plants. But that's one step that I would definitely not skip. So to recap, read your seed packets. Um, also check your seed packets. They will say like this one says germination rate is 94%. So I can't think of one single pack of seeds that I've ever seen that said it had a 100% successful germination rate. So what that means is say you have a hundred seeds, 94 of them germinated and six of them did not. So to combat this, what a lot of people will do is put two seeds per cell tray. So um, there's cell trays that have four, six, 10, 120 different cells in a tray. Um, you can just do what's right for you. I'm going to try um, soil blocking this year. So I'll bring you along with me on that to show you how that works. But um, you can put two seeds per little cell and then when both of them come up you can choose to separate that and make two different cells or you can just cut the top off of one of them um, but you really don't want to leave both of them or three or four of them if the seeds are really tiny um, to grow in one cell tray because what's going to happen is um, none of them are going to be great none of them are going to be successful you only want to leave one per cell tray um, I have a really hard time with this because I feel like I'm murdering the plant when I kill it off. But if you don't do that, you're not going to have that one healthy, tall, beautiful plant that you want. You're going to have a couple plants in there that are kind of eh, struggling to get by. And the first um, part of a plant's life, I think it is the most important because it sets it up for success. When you have a plant that starts out with uh, nutrients in its soil and its um, great start nice and strong you're not going to have as many problems down the road with um, pest pressure and disease and things like that it's going to be a lot hardier and able to fight that kind of thing off so um, that's another thing also and going back to seed size there are some seeds like I'll show you this one this is digitalis and there are 50 seeds in this packet. <laughs> Let's see if I can zoom in on that. But there's 50 seeds in this packet. And not only are there 50 seeds in this packet, but because they are so small, they've been pelletized. So there's like a little coating around them to make them a little bit bigger so you can see them. So 50 seeds in here. And if you go trying to put each one of them down, sometimes you can accidentally put four or five in a little block in, um, so therefore you've got four or five plants coming up and um so then it's kind of hard to kill them off but um a great way to combat that is to use a toothpick and you take the toothpick you dip in what in water then you get one seed and you put it in and that may seem a little tedious but it's going to save you money down the road and let's talk about money i mean that is one of the main reasons to grow from seed there's two main reasons that i can think of one is money 
and one is to get variety because you can grow things from seed that you just can't find at your plant store, right? So this is 50 seeds of digitalis. This is a type of digitalis. This is um, Dalmatian peach and it's pelleted. This flowers the first year, which a lot of digitalis or foxglove um, flowers the second year. It's a biannual. This one flowers the first year. So this packet I got for, gosh, I can't remember, $4.50, $6.50, something like that, but no more than $6.50 for 50 seeds. If I were to go buy one mature plant of this, I could expect to spend anywhere from $25 to $35, $39 for one plant. And I've got 50 of them for less than $10. So you do the math. So it's definitely worth it. Definitely worth um, the time, energy, and effort that it does take to grow from seed. And for me, I just love being able to get out, get my hands in the dirt, um, seeing the seeds grow. And um, it's just nice to know that you did it yourself. You grew it from seed. Like I said, there's quite a few, especially vegetables, that I like to direct sow. And um, it'll tell you on the back of the seed packets which ones prefer direct sowing, which ones prefer to be started indoors early. But the ones that I direct sow, um, you have to make sure that you keep the area moist. And even if you start the seeds indoors, you don't want to let your soil dry out. So that is uh, a huge part of it. And there is a lot that goes into growing seeds um, you know, growing plants from seed. Not that it's hard or anything. There's just a lot more to it than I care to cover on this video where I don't have them right in front of me where I can give you an example. So I will do a video where I'll be showing you how I'll be doing um, seeds and soil blocking and seeds and cell trays. And I'll bring you along with me and show you the success that I have with that. Um, any other little things that go on and um, I'm just really looking forward to a great gardening season. I'm planning on growing tons and tons of flowers this year so uh, stay tuned uh, with me for the rest of the season and we'll just see how it goes. I'm really looking forward to it. In the meantime, uh, thank you so much for gardening with me. God bless and have a great week.